Gold Pony. Gold If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the new 2020 Honda HRV, courtesy of Heritage Honda in Westminster, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so, quite excited to be in this one. Above average reliability score by Consumer Reports. That's a good start. Honda's most affordable way to get all wheel drive in an SUV as well. And it's been a couple years since I've checked this one out, so I wanted to get back into it. So, what do you say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so, as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2020 HRV. First one being the LX, starting at $20,820. Sport, starting at $22,520. EX for $23,970. EXL for $25,570. And lastly, the Touring, starting at $28,000. $1,890. And so we're in the EX today, by the way, in case anybody was curious throughout the video. But nonetheless, regardless of trim level that you go with, power plant is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is a 1.8 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 141 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, 127 pound feet of torque available at 4,300 RPM power sent to front wheels or all wheels. I should mention though that all wheel drive is a $1,500 option. So with those trim levels, just add $1,500 if you wanted to go that route. But that power sent to the ground through a CVT with paddle shifters, if you go with the sport trim level and up. And zero to 60 comes in at approximately 9.6 seconds according to Motor Tread. So I gotta be honest, on paper, that number is quite slow. We will test out the acceleration in a little bit though. MPG numbers come in at 28 city, 34 high highway for the front wheel drive, 27 in the city, 31 on the highway for the all wheel drive, either way taking regular unleaded fuel, AKA 87 octanes. That's always nice to save you a little bit of money there. But so before we do any kind of acceleration in the HRV, I did want to mention there are essentially three drive modes. There's the normal configuration that you essentially don't have to touch anything and that is how you're going to be set up. Then there is an econ button or an econ drive mode that's going to be located just by the driver's left knee. And then there's the sport driving mode where you just slide the shifter all the way to the back and essentially what those driving modes do is adjust things like the throttle response shift points and the climate control i will tell you having owned three or four civics with that econ button when you hit that it does substantially dial back the climate control so on a hot day you're going to get less air conditioning if you were to do that it was perfectly fine for me so it's just a slight difference there but i did want to mention that just so you guys are aware of it but having said that i'm going to push the shifter back it did immediately downshift for me there so it is going to hold the rpms at a much higher level giving you more power on demand as we're churning up this hill here but Dang, that is cool. Glad there's a sport mode on the HRV considering that zero to 60 number that I just went over. But having said that, what do you guys say now that we're in that sport mode? Let's do a quick little paddle shifter test since we have them. And let's see how quickly they are going to actually react for us here. All right, you guys, here it is. Paddle shifter test. Okay, that's weird. They're actually quick. Okay, so having said that, this is a CVT, so they are essentially simulated gears that it's going through there. But having said that, they're quicker than the ridge line I just got done test driving, so that's kind of interesting. I don't know, it's kind of cool. I like that the paddle shifters are there. You, of course, can use them for engine braking when it snows out as well, so it's gonna help prevent you from sliding off the road because the engine is gonna be doing the braking as opposed to you actually hitting the brakes, so that's a plus there too. But that's kind of cool. I like that. So anyways, let's take it out of that sport driving mode. I'm just going to slide the shifter back up, giving full control back to the HRV. And having said that, let's do a quick little acceleration test and let's see how quickly the HRV here can get us up to speed. I will do a rolling start here and here we go. Dang, that's loud. It's not bad. I'm sure you'll get used to it, but dang, a lot of engine noise when I hit the gas there. Not that that's a bad thing. Me personally, I don't mind it. I'm just telling you guys, in case you do mind it, it does get quite noisy when you really hit the gas in the HRV. So, doesn't bother me, might bother you. Still not the quickest SUV in the world, though, I will say that. But then again, you always have the CRV if you wanted a little quicker acceleration, maybe. But, anyways. 
To go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.5 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.1 inch solid rear discs. 60 to zero stopping distance comes in at 114 feet. That's something Honda really gets right for the most part for most of their vehicles, including this one. That 114 feet from 60 to zero is quite honestly pretty darn good. Pretty amazing. For comparison's sake, the Hyundai Kona, 132 feet for that one. Nissan Kicks, 126 feet. Jeep Renegade, 133 feet. So 114 is really absolutely amazing. So if you're driving the HRV in rush hour traffic, you need to come to a quick stop. This is the one that you want to be in because this is going to bring you to a quicker stop, comparatively speaking, to the other SUVs in its class, essentially. So love that. Touching on suspension and handling, though, up front you will get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, torsion beam rear suspension if you go with the front-wheel drive configuration. Otherwise, if you go with the all-wheel drive, you're going to get a DD on rear suspension, which is not quite as good as the independent rear suspension, but still better than the torsion beam rear suspension. Figured I'd mention that because not a whole lot of people are familiar with that suspension. But anyways, it does the trick. Of course, you will find a front stabilizer bar for the two-wheel drive configuration, but having said that, front and rear stabilizer bars for the all-wheel drive configuration. So therefore, you will get a little better handling if you go with the all-wheel drive configuration just because the front-wheel drive doesn't give you a rear stabilizer bar. So I wanted to mention that as well. But so all in all, as far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine for me. So really no issues there. Pretty much as expected, really, I should say. As far as the steering feel goes, a little bit on the heavier side. I kind of like it compared to a lot of the other SUVs in its class. Steering feel is a little bit weightier, so a better feeling of being in control, really, of the HRV. But anyways, continuing on, like I said, cabin noise can get a bit noisy when you're really hitting the gas. But other than that, pretty much as expected, no issues there. Touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Absolutely no issues whatsoever there. But that about rounds up the performance segment of this review. You guys, let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 Honda HRV. All right, so here she is, you guys, the 2020 Honda HRV finished in a midnight exterior. Looks actually pretty darn good. I actually like the exterior color on this one. But anyways, let's just go ahead and make our way up front. Projector beam halogen headlights come standard on all trim levels, but the touring. Either way, automatic headlights do come standard as well, meaning when it starts to get dark out, they will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard, and so that touring trim level, that is going to give you LED headlights. So projector beams are gone, LEDs replace that, so a little better illumination with the touring trim level. Honeycomb style front grille coming with the sport and touring trim levels. All other trims are going to give you black horizontal accents essentially. And there is a black front lip and side skirts for all trim levels but the touring because because once again, touring trim level is going to give you body colored front lip and body colored side skirts, in case you were curious. But let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the HRV here. Silver roof rails coming with the sport trim level and up. Rear privacy glass with the EX trim level and up. Black window surrounds come standard as well, which actually are kind of nice because it helps disguise that rear door handle. So the door handle for the front doors are obviously on the doors itself, but rear door handle kind of up there in the corner. So it's going to be disguised with the rest of the black accents. So more of a coupe-like styling, I guess you could say. Power adjustable body colored side mirrors come standard for all trims, but the Sport. Sport is going to give you gloss black side mirrors. And if you go with the EX trim level and up, you will get heated side mirrors with integrated turn signals actually as well. And so therefore that's what you're looking at right now. Taking a look down at the wheel setup, 17 inch silver alloy wheels coming with the LX, EX, and EXL trims, 17 inch machine finished alloys with the touring, and 18 inch machine finished alloys with the sport trim level. Let's open them, make your way to the back of the HRV shark fin antenna up top to start, rear spoiler with the integrated brake light, rear window wiper as well. LED brake lights actually come standard across the board, love that. And just below it all, a single exhaust outlet with the chrome tip if you go with the sport trim level and up. So therefore, I think you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip.
And so but now since we are around back when it comes to opening that rear lift gate there is a button on the key fob that is one way there actually is a button on the lift gate itself that is the other way essentially but once opened up behind that second row cargo capacity comes in at 23.2 cubic feet decent amount actually with that second row folded down that bumps it up to 57.6 cubic feet for comparison's sake, the Hyundai Kona comes in at 45.8 cubic feet, so quite substantially larger than a lot of the other SUVs actually in its segment. So good bit of space here in the HRV, so that's good. All trim levels are also going to give you cargo tie-down anchors back there. There's cargo lighting back there as well. And overall, again, plenty of space back in the cargo area there. Make your way up to the rear legroom. That comes in at 39.3 inches. So for reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Also, you can find a passenger seat back map pocket back there, 12 volt power outlet, and one of the coolest parts about the HRV, just like the Honda Fit, just like the Honda Ridgeline, there is a 60-40 split magic seat. Meaning, if you have a Great Dane or a Mastiff and you don't want them scratching up the seats, you can actually fold the seats up. So therefore, that gives them enough room to stand or lay down, whatever. And it's pretty darn cool. It's pretty convenient. It's very practical. So I love that Honda put that in the HRV as well. So that might be just one of the best features about the HRV besides the space itself. But make your way to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seats are going to come with the LX, Sport, and EX trim levels leather seating is going to come with the exl l meaning leather of course and the touring heated front seats come with the ex trim level and up eight-way power driver seat is going to come with the touring otherwise you get the manually adjustable seats like i said but seats are plenty comfortable though i will say that as well and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is a urethane finish for just about all trim levels but the sport exl and touring those three are going to give you a leather wrap steering wheel in case you wanted that now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key first you have your honda logo on the one side of course and on the other side lock unlock and of course that button to pop the rear hatch however it is all keyless entry simply just leave the key in your pocket walk up to the hrv there is a push button start just to the left of the climate control settings up front here so all i'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button there. And so both them once started up, tachometer is all the way on your left, speedometer is front and center, and you have a digital display of some useful information all the way to the right, and to control what is on that digital display, there are actually steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there. It's gonna give you a couple of different things like your oil life meter, for instance. That's my favorite part about Honda. It lets you know when you need your next oil change. It actually saves you a good bit of money there. Tire pressure monitoring system for each individual tire. There's trip A, trip B, plenty of stuff really you can check out up there everything you would need i should say then make our way to overall interior quality on this one power moonroof is going to come with the ex trim level and up automatic climate control once again with the ex trim level and up sport pedals of course with the sport trim level as expected there home link controls are going to come with the touring trim level if you wanted them and you will find an auto dimming rear view mirror for the exl and the touring trim levels if you wanted that as well but overall definitely pretty much as expected for the price point i do like the stitching just above the glove box here i like the singular air vent just above the glove box there too that looks pretty darn cool of course like i said the automatic climate control you could set a temperature and it'll go to that temperature for you there's an electromechanical parking brake a couple cup holders just behind that and a very very little bit of storage just underneath the center armrest there but it's pretty much as expected quite honestly for this price point so no issues for me there but to then make your way to the tech display on the hrv five inch color lcd screen coming with the lx only so all other trim levels there for the sport trim level and up is going to give you a seven inch color touchscreen display bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard either way but the sport trim level and up is going to give you that android auto and apple carplay meaning if you have a smartphone hook it up to the hrv and therefore you have free navigation displayed up on that tech display the ability to like and dislike your print or songs and there's a couple other compatible apps up there as well factory navigation system comes with the touring again although you don't need it because if you have a smartphone you already have it through android auto apple carplay anyways can of course check out your radio settings up there and by the way when it comes to the sound system lx trim level gives you a four speaker 160 watt sound system sport trim level still four speakers but 180 watts on that one and then the ex trim level and up gives you six speakers once again 180 watts so i do believe you guys know what we have to do next let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and 
let's test out the clarity of this one. It's as expected. It's pretty much as expected. Not a ton of loudness, not a ton of bass, but it'll get the job done. I will say that. It'll get the job done for the size of the HRV. Wouldn't have minded an upgraded sound system with maybe uh, 360 watts in a subwoofer. I know Honda has used that one before, but again, it's good enough for the HRV. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display, at least, is when you do put this one in reverse, you will find a rear view camera with dynamic grid lines for all trims across the board, letting you know who or what is behind Behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so let me first start by mentioning the 2020 honda hrv is an iihs top safety pick if you equip it with the led headlights meaning the touring trim level only but otherwise it's not but anyways front side side curtain airbags come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks back there as well tire pressure monitoring system but of course the coolest part being honda sensing coming standard with the ex trim level and up and so what that is going to include is a collision mitigation braking system road departure mitigation system adaptive cruise control lane keep assist forward collision warning lane departure warning warning, automatic high beams, Honda Lane Watch, which essentially is Honda's version of the blind spot monitoring system. When you put on the turn signal to turn right, it's going to display what is in your blind spot up on that infotainment screen. So that's always pretty cool. I really like that. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the HRV, I actually really like this one. It's an IIHS top safety pick. If you go with that touring, like I said, best braking in its class. That's a really big one for me because you don't want to get into an accident, obviously, and this is going to give you that best braking setup all-wheel drive is available that's always good magic seat in the second row is absolutely amazing downside it is slow i will say that you do have the crv if you want a little better pickup but this isn't a race car either this is a commuter car essentially and it should be plenty enough for you to merge onto the highway you guys can test drive one for yourself if you want it but it is on the slower side compared to its competitors there but still the braking kind of makes up for it in my opinion the other constructive criticism i have is if this particular vehicle is supposed to appeal to millennials or younger generation given its price point i would assume that if i were honda i would definitely offer an available upgraded sound system perhaps like the 360 watt sound system with the subwoofer or something like that that you often see in other Hondas. But those are my two constructive criticisms and in the end a very very solid pick especially with the braking. The steering feel is excellent. IIHS top safety pick. Magic Row in the second seat it's very practical very nice but that is about it for this one you guys though feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold